No matter how much you care for your plants, they are prone to various diseases as a result of environmental change. One of those diseases is fungal attack. In fact, over 19,000 fungi are known to cause diseases in crop plants worldwide. Most of them can be easily transmitted through wind, water, soil and insects. In this way, they may infest an entire crop. However, fortunately, fungal diseases may be controlled through some treatments or fungicides if detected and correctly identified in the timely manner. Probably, it is best to use organic fungicides to prevent and treat the fungal diseases, but that's a separate topic for another video. However, if the infection is severe, most of the farmers apply chemical fungicides in their plants. Now the question is that, is there any universal or all-in-one chemical fungicides to cure all and each different kind of fungal diseases? You may have probably seen many videos in YouTube claiming such one-in-all fungicides. Let me be very clear, such claim is completely wrong and may misguide the beginner's hobbyist. It's like imagine someone claims to invent one single medicine to cure all the human diseases, from common flu to cancer. How wrong that would be. However, there is one chemical fungicide which can be used for treatment of several or even sometime most of the fungal diseases that we gardener face in our kitchen garden or in ornamental or flowering plants if we can identify those diseases correctly. Today's video is all about such chemical fungicide, how and when to use it and most importantly how to identify those diseases which can be treated using that fungicide. But before starting, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and different groups. Also if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing it. This will support me to make many more informative videos. First start with the identification of 7 very common fungal diseases in the plants. I'll try to keep it very simple and avoid difficult technical and scientific terms for them. Let's start with soil-borne fungal disease or commonly known as damping off. It refers to the rotting of stem and root tissues at or below the soil line. It affects the vegetables and flowers primarily targeting seeds and the new seedlings. Although the cold soil temperature and poor drainage system is the main culprit for these soil-borne pathogens, some environmental conditions such as high humidity levels, excessive fertilizer-rich potting soils and planting too deeply will also encourage its growth. Due to the same reasons, one more similar looking fungal disease can appear which is known as mold. Fortunately, both of these diseases can be prevented easily by using sterilized organic well-trained potting soil or potting mix and by avoiding overwatering. I made a separate video for such potting mix recipe, please check it out. The second disease is known as downy mildew. Although it is not considered as a true fungal disease nowadays, but once people thought it is as a fungal problem. And interestingly, one can still apply some specific fungicide which are effective in protecting against downy mildew infection. How to identify it? It causes yellow spots on the upper lip surface between the leaf veins. These spots spread everywhere in the upper leaf and eventually turn brown, preventing the plants to properly photosynthesize, thus leading to a slow death. It can occur in many vegetable plants like cucumber, cabbage, broccoli, radish, melon, pumpkin, cauliflowers, as well as flowering plants like roses, hibiscus, and even in many fruiting plants. I'll discuss about its treatment later in this video. Next, the powdery mildew. It is a very common fungal disease that affects many different types of plants. Tomatoes, eggplants, chili peppers, beans, potatoes, cucumbers, squash, pumpkins, roses, hibiscus, genia, and grapes are the most vulnerable to this fungus. These white powdery spots emerge in a circular pattern on the leaves, stems, and even in the fruits. Although powdery mildew often grows on the upper surface of the leaves, 
it can also develop on the lower side young foliage is the most vulnerable to damage unlike many other diseases this one spread and thrives the most in dry and warm climates especially with the high humidity levels this disease can spread very rapidly turning the leaves yellow and covering most of the leaves buds and developing tips eventually the plant can die if it is not treated at very early stage the treatment part will come later in this video although the powdery mildew is often confused with downy mildew but their symptoms and causes are different see the side by side comparison in this picture to understand this better next the blight diseases commonly three different blight diseases can occur in the plants first talk about the fire blight it is actually caused by a gram negative bacteria it is not a fungal disease and thus will be covered maybe in a separate video however let's see how they look like in order to distinguish them from other fungal blight diseases it attacks soft new growth first you would probably notice die back at the top of the plant most infected leaves and branch tips will rapidly turning brown or black interestingly the leaves die become black or brown but do not drop off it only occurs in apples pears and other members of the rose family most of the vegetables are safe from this type of bacterial infection next talk about the early blight disease which is caused by fungus this disease first appeared on the older and lower leaves a small brown spot with concentric rings it spreads outward on the leaf surface causing it to turn yellow and die eventually the stem fruit and the upper portion of the plant will become infected and lead to the death of the entire plant high temperatures and wet humid conditions can promote its rapid spread tomato potato eggplant chili peppers are the most vulnerable to this disease despite of its name this disease can occur any time throughout the growing season however that's not the case with our next candidate the lead blight also a fungal disease and like what its name suggests this disease occurs later in the growing season it occurs mainly in tomatoes and potatoes it is also commonly known as potato blight it can infect leaves stems tomato fruits and potato tubers the leaf infections start with large brown patches with greenish or gray edge eventually infects the entire leaf and turning it to a dry brown foliage in the stem and fruit this disease can create firm dark brown circular spots next discuss about the fungal leaf spot this occurs in roses some fruit trees and vegetables such as tomato chili pepper lettuce cabbage broccoli cauliflowers the disease development is favored by cool temperature and long periods of high relative humidity the infected plants have brown or black spots on the leaf sometimes with a yellow halo surrounding the spot as the infection spreads the spots become numerous eventually the entire leaf become yellow or brown and fall off fortunately it can be easily treated by a fungicide which i will show later the next candidate is called the rust fungus as the name suggests the symptom of the rust is the orangish brown patches or spots on the leaves or stems or even on the fruits of the plant they usually occur under side of the leaves but may also appear on the top of them it may cause leaves to fall prematurely and if enough of the leaves fall the growth of the plant may be stunted and eventually it may die if other secondary infection grows this fungus happens in mostly agricultural crops such as coffee wheat barley and soybean and finally the fruit rot fungus this is a rather generic term it includes many different kinds of fruit rot diseases it could be blossom end rot which is common in tomatoes and chili pepper plants and often caused by lack of calcium or uneven watering or it could be brown rot which mostly occurs in the fruits of almonds apricot cherries peaches and plums you can identify those by looking at this image here treatment is the same for both of these two cases which i'll show next 
all the seven fungal diseases i discussed can be treated or even prevented to some extent using a common chemical fungicide of course there are other fungal infections for example canker in lemon or citrus plants which cannot be treated using this fungicide and requires a different type of fungicide if you want to see a video on that please let me know in the comment box now the chemical composition of the common fungicide in today's topic is a combination of mancojep and carbendazim it is a broad spectrum contact and systemic mixer fungicide with both protective and curative action let me explain what i meant by the terms contact and systemic contact fungicide doesn't enter in the plant it remains in the outer surface like the leaves of the plant it will come into action once the fungus comes in contact with it whereas the systemic fungicide is taken up by the plant and then translocated within the plant system it can thereby protect the plant from infections and restrict the further growth of existing fungal attack both of these fungicides have their advantages and disadvantages but a mixer of them has been proven as a better and broad spectrum option in recent days the mancojep part of this fungicide is considered as contact fungicide it contains polymer of manganese and zinc on the other hand carbendazim is a systemic fungicide whose organic formula contains carbon molecules here in this fungicide you can find a mixer of 25% carbendazim and 50% mancojep there is another popular choice for this similar fungicide in the market known as saf from an indian company upl which contains 12% carbendazim and 63% mancojep both of these have similar actions and you can use any one of those but keep in mind that these are chemical fungicides they are toxic to human birds and household animals even high dose of it can kill an entire plant so you need to be careful and precise while applying it to your plants the application procedure is fairly simple it is best to use it as foliar spray rather than directly apply in the soil for this you can take any kind of garden sprayer choose the size of the sprayer according to your need for both the sprayers i have taken 2 liters of normal water this is a 5 ml spoon or commonly known as teaspoon one full teaspoon corresponds to approximately 5 and 1/2 grams of fungicides 1 gram is just this little quantity we will be using 1 and 1/2 gram to 2 gram of this fungicide per 1 liter water so here i am using 3 to 4 g into 2 liter water mix them well and pump the sprayer same procedure for the big one apply this fungicide mixed water to your infected plants make sure you apply thoroughly and cover every parts of the plant especially the infected parts even if your plant is not affected by fungus you can still use this multipurpose fungicide as a preventive measure but remember always apply this in early morning or late evening try to avoid using it during the sunny day time you can also use some stickering agent like few drops of liquid soap or shampoo in this solution to make it more effective applying the fungicide especially during rainy season is a must to prevent your plants from getting fungal attacks you can use this fungicide once in a week and you will definitely get good result out of it so that will be it for today's video see you soon in another new informative video till then happy gardening